Well, welcome to Veggies from the Ledges. We're here in Grand Ledge, Michigan. Uh, here around me are five of my high tunnels. We started the business about three years ago. And uh, the first uh, high tunnel we put up was just more of an experimentation, not really knowing what to expect, which was this one over here to our right. Immediately progressed to this, this uh, long one here which is uh, 28 by, by 96 and uh, the reason why this came about so quickly after putting the first one up was just due to the demand of, of and the interest both of the public with fresh organically grown produce. I gotta admit when I started this I really didn't know what I was doing. I don't even really know why I did what I did. It was just I think more of a inclination that uh, I myself like fresh produce and it was hard to find anywhere locally and out of experimentation it just kind of fell into place. One thing led to another, i.e. meaning farmers markets and, and meeting people and demand picking up and so on and so forth. When I first started I really intended to grow just for myself. I, I wanted a garden. I didn't have a garden. Um, I started running cross paths of people who were interested in this sort of thing, this kind of a business. I got invited to go to a couple farmers markets. Uh, people started uh, showing more and more interest. They asked if I had an email list, they wanted to be on it, and uh, it just kind of grew from there. Now uh, I'm involved with the schools, with the, uh, the Michigan the School, the Farm School program here in Michigan. And I'm um, also entering into the, uh, the commercial, the restaurant uh, business as well. This morning we're going to go to Olivet Public Schools and we're going to do a, a delivery for this week's orders. And we have spinach, we have an encore, which is a salad mix, and then we have a romaine mix, which is a, a red green romaine. Again, these are all grown organically. And then we have uh, some carrots. This is our first uh, picking of carrots for this spring. We started these back in uh, I think October of last year, and now they're just now ready to be harvested in the, in the tunnels. We planted these back in uh, fall of last year and uh, they're just now coming on to where they're ready to be harvested. Actually I got involved with the, uh, the farm school program uh, just because of the interest where the schools were wanting to go on a nutritional level with, with the kids. Uh, I remember you know as I growing up we didn't have these opportunities ourselves and, and uh, this day and age with, with the health concerns and behavioral issues and such, um, this only made sense. And to be part of that and be able to uh, make change for the better, uh, it, it just, it was, it was a no-brainer. And so here I am and I'm, I'm hoping that we we're able to expand that into other schools as well. They had the uh, the farm to school day, and I was invited to come down and, and, and bring some uh, produce with me and introduce it to the kids, and and uh, we had some fun with that. And uh, boy, I tell you, the kids really got into that, you know, and and they grew some of the same things themselves, you know, and they had the stories to tell, and you know, the kids never seen anything and didn't know what it was, like a beet, for an example, and. And so, you know, it's an educational process from, from young childhood all the way through adult. And I'm just part of it, and it makes it fun. This is all new. I mean, this is new to, to everybody. Um, you know, and it, it, it's like with anything else. The challenge is getting the word out. It's, it's getting people educated that, that there are programs like this available. Um, I, I think, you know, with, with the assistance with uh, with Colleen and, and Michigan State, you know, they've done a, 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 a terrific job, you know, in getting that word out, um, providing opportunities for people to, to become part of this. Um, but ultimately, it really comes down to making that choice. 
And this is another thing about this. This is all about making the choice. You know, we, we can't, nor do we ever want to get to the point where we control one's choice that they make. Um, but the same token, you know, let's look at our issues that we're faced with healthcare-wise, look at the issues with, with kids, with, with the health issues, let's look at our, our, our population density growth, let's look at, uh, I mean, we, we can go on and on and on, and so we need more local growers. There's just no question about it. And I think it's a movement that's going to catch on over time. And, and as that catches on, it's going to uh, create a wave, I think, which other people then on the receiving side will catch on and grow. And, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. This isn't going to come about in a day. Um, it's going to take time, it's going to require patience, and it's going to require some, some dedication. And uh, I think, you know, there's others on the side that are kind of watching on both the, the, the provider side and the receiver side. And as they see this move forward and opportunities uh, increase, they too will then come on board as well. You know, somebody's got to kind of be the pioneer, and then, then others will, will, will follow, and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, by any means. So, as far as kids goes, with the schools, you know, I, it's a tough situation to control because, you know, we don't know what their, their family life is. We don't know what kind of choices they're being provided to make at home. So the only thing we can do is, is bring it to the table during the day, introduce it to them, let them try it, and uh, hopefully they'll find something in here that they're going to like. And uh, hopefully with, with, with the help of the schools, with the help of the universities, and the help of the growers, you know, their parents become more and more educated if they already aren't regarding, you know, local food and things will just come back around in a full circle over time.
one of the things that, that I, as a grower, is kind of at a disadvantage of is, let's say, with carrots. Because I can't afford to sell bulk carrots that they can buy them from. And they get the small carrots that are already peeled. A lot of it's labor intensive. So, there's some downfalls with that as well. But, okay. It's cold in here. This is the, our second year of getting fresh produce from Dwayne. It's veggies from the ledges. And he might have told you how we met, did he? We were at a conference together. It was a, a Lansing local food conference. And we happened to be sitting at a round table together and introduced ourselves. And I said I was looking for fresh produce. And he happened to be, uh, he says, well, I've got it. And right in your county. So we are in the same county. Yep. So that's kind of how we be began our collaboration. That summer, um, Duane invited myself and our uh, supervisor out to visit the, uh, his farm. So we were very comfortable after visiting that uh, his practices are safe and sanitary and doesn't use pesticides. So we were, and every, the facility was clean, you know. The, the gardens were weed free, so we were very impressed. I also work with uh, a local apple farmer, and that farmer provides us with apples and pears in the fall, and I also have a local peach farmer who supplies us with fresh peaches. That's pretty much that first week in September. I, I put fresh peaches on the menu, because after that it's pretty much gone. But, uh, so we're pleased to work with fresh fruit and fresh vegetables.